Hi, we're the K3, and this is our final thought on when the camellia blooms. And this was a Karen show. Karen, <laughs> take it away. I did watch it all the way through, uh -huh. um, although there was a question that I would, but I, I'm glad I stuck with it because in the end, I really, I really enjoyed the show. Nice. So let's, why don't you give us a, for those who have not seen it, what is a quick synopsis, if you can do it, <laughs> quick with, this show, with this show? I'm going to read what I wrote okay. because this is about as succinct as I could get. Okay, great. We're just saying something for me. All right. So a single mother raises her young son and runs a restaurant bar in a small seaside town, seaside, seaside, while traversing relationships with the local police officer who falls madly in love with her. Of course. <laughs> of course. And of course, the famous baseball player ex-boyfriend who is the father of her son. Oh, scandalous. A mother who abandoned her when she, at an orphanage when she was a young <gasps> child. Um, the community gossips. Mm -hmm. Uh, and an unknown serial killer who has threatened her. <laughs> well, because this show had everything. Not? This okay. show did have it a did. little bit of everything. So Gung Hyo Jin. Right. And Kang Han All, first uh, K-drama after military service. How was the yes. pairing for you? Because this show was huge. 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 Well, did, I forget what their what their ratings were. I think they got over 15%. I, I think if they, were, they, were, they were both were hovering 10. around were they, 20. Were they so hovering around 20? So, yeah. It was yes. huge. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Um, what I really liked actually early on, especially early on in the series, was that actually the three of them, the bit of the triangle that was oh, represented oh, with Kim when Kim Ji Suk <gasps> came Kim to town and started figuring out, oh, oh, hey, is this my kid? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yes, um, it is. You know, but, the big dumb athlete, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did it so well. Like, oh, this is not answering your question, though. So um, I thought the two of them, to the characters together, made a lot of sense. Um, again, it was the type of thing where I thought I had to hang in there for a while to kind of get on board. So then it. what was it that when, what was the thing that kept you from not, from dropping it and hanging in there to where it became such a big it was show a little for you? Slow? Yeah. Is that what you mean? It, it, a couple of things. I will tell you what, what I, why I almost dropped it. Uh -huh. It was a very slow paced uh -huh. story. Mm -hmm. The unfolding of the events and the characters was very slow. And I was kind of like, when are we going to get... <laughs> get on with things <laughs> but i will tell you what kept me in it was kang hanu oh, actually okay Ooh. him and also a lot of the supporting characters this cast was phenomenal from top to bottom you will recognize everybody nice. in the show and everybody bought, brought their a game to the show so so the supporting nice. characters and some of those those um those storylines also helped keep me interested in but for gong hyo jin who i whom i love she's one of my favorite actresses oh yeah um it was interesting in hindsight, looking back, I can see that her character development was perfectly paced. Oh, no. Nice. I okay. was just impatient for her to get to a certain point and nice. have that turning point. And for me, it felt as I was watching it real time, it felt like it took forever to get there. Okay. <laughs> oh, so maybe it's binge worthy? I would say it is binge worthy, depending on your binge style. I wouldn't recommend more than like two episodes a day, though. I, this is not the type of show where you would binge like, <laughs> round the clock and stay up and drink coffee. It's not that Okay, so it's not, it's not the show. kind that you're getting a cliffhanger at the end of every episode and you, you just have to hit play on the next one or let it just roll through? I did not have that experience okay. with it. And even toward the end when things were starting, like when things were moving along and like, okay, things are going to get wrapped up. I liked having a few days in between to kind of let things settle and kind of take oh, okay. things in. And so that's just, my, just my opinion. So as someone who did not watch even one episode. <laughs> Did you not? I couldn't remember if you watched. Never, I know. I, know. At the beginning. I just never got around to it. And it just. Because the, you watched a few. Right? I watched you, a couple, couple at the beginning and, and a couple at the end. But yeah, the yeah. pace was it, not for It me. was, uh, for some reason, every time I went to hit play, there was, just, I don't know, it never happened. And then listening to your description, while it sounded enjoyable, it just didn't seem like a gen show. <laughs> but my question for, is, is um, for someone like myself, what would you say, like, what were some of your favorite themes or, or storylines that would get someone that maybe is on the fence about what, whether they would watch it or not? I would say one of the primary themes, mm -hmm. and this was probably for every single character, was family. Okay. And in particular, a, a child's relationship with their parent and vice versa. And, and what a parent would do for their child. Oh, okay. But All also right. there was a, there was some of that, the other, in the other direction, what a child would do for their parents. So she's a single mother. Her child is an eight year old boy who hasn't known his father. Mm -hmm. He's 
funny. That kid. That kid. <laughs> that and kid. let me. I have to give a shout out to this actor because he's he's great. Kim Kang Hoon as Pilgu. Eight-year-old Pilgu. Nice. Um, the eight-year-olds killed it this year. Yeah, <laughs> killed it. <laughs> it was a great I'm year. doing over and over. 2019 was a great year for eight-year-olds. Eight year olds. Yep. With just Good. words of wisdom. Good job, kids. Fantastic. Good job. But because, you know, he saw the struggles that his mother went through and, you know, when she was crying and trying to hide it. Uh -huh. He took kid. on he, a lot of responsibility, he, emotional responsibility. He did. <laughs> he was like giving her the talking to's and the kind of the, come on, mom. And he's like, I'm, well, I'm the man of the house. And so I, you know, I <laughs> just like, so much. Much. <laughs> he had a beautiful, beautiful. So their relationship actually. And then when her mother comes back into the story and mm -hmm. becomes more integral in her life, which is later. In the and series. the mother is played by Lee Jung-un. Jung who you should so, always pay attention always. to. If she's in anything, watch right. it. Yeah. I mean, Parasite. Um, what was the a, other show? This Was it? Uh, Strangers from Strangers Hell. Strangers from Hell. <laughs> which, I, which I did not I did watch. not watch that oh, one. Oh, yeah. That was a little too she, terrifying she even was for me. so good. She's yeah. just amazing. She's yeah. just so, so much, grounded yeah. and powerful. So, yeah. And Radiant. She was in Radiant. That's, oh, that's the one right. for me. Yeah. She, had a, she had a great year. Oh, she had a great year. Yeah. She had an amazing 2019. So, so those themes. And then all different sorts of family, not just your blood family. There's your... The family of the community, which became a really, really, imp very, so oh, important to the story. So right. all of our found family people, this one might be one yeah. for you, for sure. But They're it was nice. different, right? The community. I mean, it was it, an alleyway of female restaurant owners. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah, nice. right? Yeah. Nice. And when um, so. Dong Baek, uh, Gong Hyo Jun's character, first moved to town, of course, they were very, she's a single mother. Mm -hmm. She opened up a restaurant bar. Very judgmental. What? Very gossipy. But at the end of the she day, she must be sleeping with everybody. Though. Oh, she must oh, be. Really? And why is it only the our husbands who go to that bar? It's like, See, well. that's what I did not. Why I couldn't get into the show. It's like her holding hands with Kang Han. All, all, all of the gossip was like about, about oh, they're going to get married. I'm like, really? We're <laughs> we're equating that and just oh, the yes. idea that she was a bar owner and that everyone, you know, she must be sleeping with all these husbands. I was just, it was just. It was mean. Uh, it was mean, but it was also like overly juvenile to me. And that's kind of one of, that was the main reason I couldn't really mm. get into this show. Mm. I could see that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can see that. And it is interesting how it came back around at the end where, in fact, they were on her side. Mm -hmm. Like when she needed it, they had her back. So mm -hmm. it was such an interesting contrast to the beginning where they were talking down about her the whole time. Yeah. And she didn't feel yes. comfortable living there mm -hmm. yeah why would you yeah everyone thinks you're sleeping with their yeah, husband there, there's That's, a point where she was ready right? to move out of town yeah she's just like i'm just gonna leave so the ending everyone seemed to be pretty happy on twitter about the ending did you find it satisfying did it stick the landing as we <laughs> always ask did it stick the landing and did it make the whole 16 hours worthwhile 20 oh my 20. god that's 20 that's right that was one of that, that was a was point right. of confusion for me because <laughs> i thought it was only 16 right. hours and the 16th hour <laughs> started and i'm like we got we had, now, now we are taking too long yeah. and then we had a lot of people on twitter like so confused they were like this is a horrible finale well sumi actually published an article uh -huh. it was like there was and it this came out late in the series where the producers had to clarify oh no no it was always meant to be 20 hours that's show. hilarious the producer had to clarify okay so after I was, 20 hours was it was it worth the 19 previous <laughs> hours of your life it was and for the very reasons i was just saying that the end message was when the community, the community as a whole can overcome anything mm -hmm. and make anything possible. It, it would have been nice maybe if that theme started to get introduced a little early on, or earlier on in the mm -hmm. series, or if I had noticed it, maybe it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> focused on other things. Um, so for me, yeah, by, and by that point, I was invested until the end. So nice. I, I like the really kind of up with people. And there was a, <laughs> there was a great line about, um, Everybody in Korea knows everybody else by one one relationship. Oh my There's God, only I love one it. relationship where you one know degree somebody. of separation. One in Korea. degree of separation. <laughs> everybody fantastic. knows everybody. So okay, so one last question I have for you because you had said the Kang Han character was your favorite and his performance was amazing. What about it? Because you didn't really touch on what it was about him. We all know him and we've seen him. For me, he's just a ton of puppy energy. So <laughs> while I enjoy him, I'm not sure that his performance would have done a lot for me. But what was it about his performance that you were like? Done. Sold. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Of course. And this is where we have to watch time and yes. keep me from going on and on about Kang Hanul. 
So like I said, a fantastic cast all the way around, but he even stood out to me amongst this excellent cast because he hit so many different emotional notes. He mm -hmm. had that puppy love uh -huh. when he was just in a leaving be all gushing and he, he, you know, talking this kind of exaggerated way with her. He was just so head over heels, but then he would get, you know, something would flare his temper and he had this like determination and, and my favorite part of his character was he had empathetic crying. Oh God! When she would cry and she was upset, he would start crying, and it wasn't. It, it was so realistic. It felt so true. So he brought all of these different right. emotional okay. um, choices, but made it a whole character to me. Okay. Nice. I felt like. Does he have so. any Scorpio in his chart? We would have oh. to take a look at that. Ooh, I would love for to sure. Look. I've I never looked. I've never <laughs> looked at his chart. He does not strike me as having a lot of fire or a uh, Scorpio kind of. I think that's what's missing for me. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Probably the well, same. Well, it's interesting for me. because his character started off as like when we see a few years back, he was a complete hothead. Where if anything pissed him off, he would like literally go after somebody physically and start yeah. a fight. But it was usually when there was some kind of injustice being done. <laughs> okay. Yes. So he would get in trouble with the police all the time for getting into these fights, but he was bringing bad guys into the police station and he eventually became a police That's officer. That's hilarious. So, ah. and that kind of that kind of went away. You didn't see that as much, but people would still comment like, oh, he's got that look in his eye. Don't Ooh, make him mad. Nice. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah. Okay, well, let's take a look at his chart one of these days, yeah. for sure. Puppy energy or hidden scorpionic energy? <laughs> Kung <laughs> <laughs> All right, any All right. final, final, final thoughts for final thoughts? Well, coming off of his performance and how it encapsulated so many different things so well and felt cohesive, I felt like the show, so many of our shows that we watch <laughs> incorporate so many different genres. <laughs> right? And yes. sometimes you're just like, oh, what? I don't know. Is it a romance? Is it a comedy? Is it a you know thriller? Is that a, 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 what's going on? Drama whiplash. Yeah, drama whiplash. Exactly. That's a great way of saying it. This show could turn on a dime, and it did it so well that I was in the whole, like oh, I didn't I get did. I didn't get whiplash. Ah, there was there was a nice. moment in the very and spoiler alert. We are talking about the whole show, so um, <laughs> there's a moment where even till the very last like the last half hour of the last episode, I was in fear because of the serial killer still hadn't been caught. And you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh. And like a second later, I am laughing out loud because uh. he gets bashed over the head. Oh, <laughs> uh. okay. Actually, it's it's Dong Bae. Gong right. Hyo Jin's character who bashes him over the head with a beer mug. And she's like, you're a big coward, aren't you? Really? You're just a big, you know? And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> I was just laughing. She saves like, the like day. One moment I'm like, oh no, it's him, it's him. And then the next I'm laughing out loud because she like has this, oh nice. She has the handle from a broken beer mug. She hit him over the head. Nice. So okay. So yep, I thought it, the show uh, covered a lot of different styles and had a really, really wonderful cast, and that's that's what in the end made it worth the investment for me. To watch. Okay. All right. Yeah. Is that awesome? All right, you yeah. guys. There it is. Our final. Well, Karen's final thoughts. With the Camellia Blues. We're the K3. I'm Jen. I'm Karen. I'm Marisa. And if you want to catch Karen's thoughts on every week that she talked about when the Camellia Blooms, you can check them out right here at our weekly watch list. And just check the comments below, and you can find the exact time that Karen talks about when the Camellia Blooms, and you can skip forward to all of the episodes. That's perfect. Yeah. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye.